Yeah, welcome to numerical methods for mathematical finance. And we started our nice section on computer arithmetic, which I believe is important really to yeah, understand numerical methods or actually be a little bit aware of dangerous corners, errors that can occur if you implement your uh, numerical method. And uh, what we studied in the last uh, section was how the computer is representing floating point numbers. So the floating point numbers, there were different sets. We learned the set of the so-called uh, normalized floating point numbers. So these are here the numbers starting from 2 to the power of e min, yeah, to the positive axis, and minus 2 to the power of e min to the negative axis. Yeah, there was a gap here, so 0, yeah, and this interval was missing, so that is added. That is the set of the denormalized floating point numbers, so that fills here the gap. It includes the 0, yeah equidistant partitioning of this um, interval, there was a set of uh, special values, yeah, plus infinity, minus infinity, and some kind of error code, yeah, not a number. Um, and here we had then, and the, at the end of the uh, last section, everything on one slide, yeah, just as a small recapitulation. So we have the exponent, yeah, to to the power of e, that is actually just encoding us here the scale. So we start at e min, yeah, two to the power of e min, two to the power of e min plus one, and so on. And this goes up to two to the power of e uh, max. And then we have uh, a factor yeah, that is between one included, two not included. So this factor here is then creating an equipartitioning of these scales of these intervals. Yeah, so I have zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, and so on. Yeah. And uh, then there were the denormalized floating point numbers. So when the E is equal to E min minus one, yeah, then the encoding switches that we just do an equipartitioning between zero yeah, and one, zero included, one not included. So these are now these guys here, yeah, zero, one, two, three. And of course, everything also on the other side. Yeah, so, so there is the sign here in front, minus one, to the power of s. And we also had these uh, special values. So the special values plus or minus infinity, they are just the next number that would occur in this uh, discretization. So if you look here, uh, the largest exponent is 2 to the power of e max. Yeah? Then there is a factor in front that is almost 2. Yeah? So if that switches to 2, the next number would be here the two to the power of e max plus one. And indeed, uh, this is also how it is encoded. Yeah, So um, our uh, infinity is here encoded as two to the power of e max plus one. So they could be interpreted as just special numbers, but they are a little bit special values because the arithmetic operations that occur uh, with this number, they differ a bit. And <clears throat> In the end, there's also this error code, not a number, yeah, which is e equals 2 to the power of e max plus 1, and uh, the c is then not um, equal to 0. So that's maybe a nice slide. Yeah, I will sometimes come back to the slide. And we already did a few numerical um, experiments. So we had a little bit of code, yeah, searching here for tiny. So tiny actually was exactly this number here, the smallest number, yeah, smallest positive number that is different from zero. And um, then we also searched here for the epsilon, yeah, which had the strange effect that actually one plus epsilon equals one. And this epsilon is, yeah, so for example, if this here is say 
this here is one. Yeah? So the epsilon is the guy that sits here in the middle and it is rounded back to one. Yeah? It could also be rounded up yeah, to one plus two epsilon, uh, but in this case, it's rounded back to one. So um, one plus epsilon is one. So now we need to talk about um, arithmetic operations. So we perform calculations on this set. And of course, we also talk on this rounding and we have to see uh, what is happening. And I will continue and do a lot of small experiments um, with you in, in the code. Yeah? And you see, see how this works. So um, yeah, arithmetic operations. So this uh, representations of the number is here our standard IEEE 754. Yeah? And this standard defines how the numbers are represented, but it also defines a criteria that any operation that is uh, implemented according to the standard should use uh, exact rounding. So that means that the result of a single atomic operation is rounded to the nearest representation. So for example, if you have the exponential function, exponential x, yeah, and it is told that this function is implemented you know, according to exact rounding, then you can be sure that the result is exact up to the rounding error. So there's no additional error. Okay, so we have to define uh, what is rounding. So here again, we have our uh, set. Yeah? So the D, the normalized floating point numbers, the D normalized floating point numbers, of course, our sign and the special values, minus infinity and plus infinity, but now actually interpreted as numbers, yeah? I will comment on this later. And then we define the rounding function. So my rounding function is just now a function that maps a value in R to this set of floating point numbers. And it is just taking the nearest representative. Yeah, So you can be sure that the distance of X and float X yeah, is just the minimum yeah, of all the numbers that are in this uh, set. Uh, actually, this definition yeah, is still ambiguous. Yeah, I'm not telling you if I'm rounding up or rounding down yeah, in case I'm just in the middle. And we will see later that there are uh, interesting choices to resolve this ambiguity. And uh, here the plus or minus infinity are actually interpreted as numbers. So if you have an X in the real, uh, in the set of real values that is much larger than say two to the power of uh, E max plus one, yeah, then it's rounded to infinity. So um, exact rounding for arithmetic operations. So formally, it means if you have say the mathematical function, yeah, so you have some uh, values in your floating point numbers. And on that, you define the, so say the true function, the mathematical function, G. You know? Then the floating point implementation of that function. So this is G tilde. Right? So this guy here on top is now the true Mathematical function, yeah, exponential, logarithm, one divided by whatever, yeah, and the G tilde is the computer implementation, yeah. And then we have that the computer implementation is indeed just round the true result to the nearest floating point. Numbers. So it is guaranteed that this single atomic operation does not produce an error that is larger than our rounding error. But now we have to be careful. Huh? So the thing is that this holds here only for a single atomic arithmetic operation. So if you have repeated operations, huh, 
take exponential of one divided by x, yeah, you have two operations, one divided by x and exponential, then you can accumulate, of course, rounding errors and you can produce much larger errors. And we already saw in our little experiment, yeah, that was may maybe a bit trivial here with the tiny. So tiny divided by two multiplied with two is actually equal to zero because it is rounded to zero and then zero times two is zero. Tiny multiplied with two divided by two is still the same as the tiny, yeah? So the tiny number. 4.9 to the power of uh, 4.9 times 10 to the power of minus 324. So you see that um, with respect to this rounding error, the order of the operation matters. Okay, so the order may make a large difference in our result. We have the set of floating point numbers, and this set includes our special values infinity and minus infinity. Yeah, it also includes um, our error code, uh, not a number. So any operation that consumes uh, another number will result in another number. Yeah, so an error cannot be fixed in that sense. Uh, with respect to infinity, well, there are some. Uh, nice uh, definition. For example, uh, one divided by zero is infinity, and one divided by infinity is uh, zero. So um, uh, there are some meaningful definitions where you can get back from this infinity, but you also have something like one plus infinity is infinity. So for the special values, we will play a little bit and we will see that there are some reasonable definitions. So it depends a little bit on the arithmetic operation, yeah, what you what you will get out. Another interesting aspect is we have rounding to infinity. So I already explained it, yeah, infinity in my set and in the definition of the rounding function is interpreted as a number. So this means that, for example, if you have here two values, say this here is my x1, it that enters the operation. This here is my um, x2. So both are floating point numbers. Both are already in the set. And then here is my um, true mathematical function. Yeah? So this is my g. Yeah, then the result of this true mathematical function could maybe be here, yeah? so it is not in the set of the floating point numbers. So this guy is now my z is equal to g x1, x2. Uh, and that is now rounded to the nearest representative, but the nearest representative is now infinity. Yeah? So this here is the g tilde of x1, x2, yeah, it is float applied to the true solution. So I can have um, rounding to infinity and that's actually very helpful. Yeah, let's conclude maybe this small discussion with some definitions. Um, we already saw this other number, the one plus epsilon equals to one. So that's this guy, the one plus epsilon sitting here, oh, maybe I make this one here blue. Okay, and this epsilon has a meaning. It is the um, machine precision. We already showed that the relative distance in the set of the normalized floating point numbers, the relative distance of two neighboring numbers is less or equal to epsilon. Yeah. So um, epsilon, since it is um, in in the middle, uh, is say the largest rounding error that can occur. Yeah. So that epsilon is the largest rounding error that can occur. Yeah. And hence it has um, a name. So this guy is called the machine precision. So if p is the number of bits we have for representing the C constant, 
Yeah. So then it is two to the power of minus P plus one. So this is the machine precision, sometimes also just called machine epsilon. And we have the very nice result that the largest relative rounding error is just this machine epsilon. So I can be sure that the difference between float x and x is equal to delta times x. Yeah? So for x positive, otherwise absolute value of x with um, delta smaller than two to the power of minus p plus one. Well, actually to, to be precise, since I have this rounding to infinity, if I'm beyond infinity, that means I have maybe much larger errors. So that's also good. If you if you round to infinity, yeah, you can actually say almost nothing. Yeah, you can have been rounded from two to the power of three e max or whatever. So that holds here only if the x is in this scale yeah, of the normalized floating point numbers. So this is here written as an exercise, but we already um, had this proof in the last session. Okay, so for machine precision, yeah, uh, to determine the, uh, the epsilon, we can write here this little program. And we already did that in the last session. So I start here with epsilon being equal to one. And as long as one plus epsilon is larger than one, so as long as I'm not rounded back to, to one, um, I make the epsilon smaller and smaller. Yeah? So one plus one is larger than one. Yeah, And then you switch to one half, one plus one half is still larger than one, and you make it smaller and smaller. And so you can find this uh, epsilon, the machine precision. And there's another nice um, idea here below. So what is actually, if I calculate one plus K times epsilon, and I have a look at the floating point number that is representing this um, result. Okay, and let's have a look at this because that was where we left off in the last session. So maybe I add um, a few titles. So this here was our experiment on the smallest positive number. And here below, this is our experiment on the machine precision. Okay, so we calculated here uh, the epsilon, yeah, making the number smaller and smaller until it is not distinguishable from, uh, until one plus epsilon is not distinguishable from one. Actually, it could also happen that uh, one plus epsilon is rounded up yeah, to one plus two epsilon. So actually I should have checked both yeah, also in, in the script, but I know it is rounded to the one. And uh, this is then the guy that sits uh, in the middle. And we already uh, know what is this number. It is uh, two to the power of minus P plus one. Yeah, So two to the power of minus 53. So we checked that. Okay, And now let's have a look what's happening if I calculate one plus two epsilon, three epsilon, five, six, seven, uh, and so on. Okay, if you do that, you see that one plus epsilon is rounded to one. Uh, one plus two epsilon is a number that has its own representation. Um, one plus three epsilon is actually rounded, but it is rounded not to one plus two epsilon, it's rounded up to one plus four epsilon. Okay, and one plus five epsilon is rounded down. Yeah? It's rounded down to one plus four epsilon. So you see the rounding scheme is actually yeah, alternating. So with respect to machine precision 
and rounding, yeah, um, you have that the number one plus k epsilon, and actually this happens on every scale. Yeah, I'm just using here the scale starting in one. So actually it happens in every scale, so times two to the power of e. This lies exactly in between two floating point numbers if k is odd. Yeah, so this lies in between two floating point numbers if k is odd. And it is a floating point number if k is even. So I have here my floating point numbers. So this would be k equals zero, k equals two, four, six, and so on. And in between, I have now these guys here, k equals one, three, five, seven, and they are rounded. And this rounding, what we just observed is that we round down for one plus epsilon, we round down to one. So for k equals one, uh, we round up for k equals three and we round down for k equals five. Yeah? So you see here, we round up for three and down for five. For five. So we have some alternating rounding scheme. And why did the inventors of this standard do this? Well, this sounds maybe strange, but if you always round up, you observe that the rounding errors accumulating in your numerical algorithm create a bias, yeah? because you always have a bias. And the same if you always round down, you have a bias. So to avoid this bias, we are creating this alternative scheme here. So we have an alternating rounding to avoid systematic biases in numerical calculation. Yeah, interesting thing. So my next topic in the lecture is loss of significance. So that means I will now study the effect uh, of one plus epsilon equals one. But before we do this, let me start um, another code session. So here at the end of our uh, session, there's a summary of our code session that we should explore a little bit the floating point implementation. Yeah, I always focus here on the double precision number. Uh, and um, we already did the first exercise, calculate the machine precision and explore a little bit the machine precision, but I would maybe like to explore um, a little bit more. So what is actually happening for the large numbers? So let's go back to our picture. So we just studied a little bit this value here. And what is actually happening here? So this guy here, before the infinity, this has a name too. This guy is the max value. It's the largest possible number that we can represent. And um, actually, what is this step here? So the scale that I'm in there, yeah, the double max value that is two to the power of E max. Okay, and then I'm uh, at one plus C divided by two to the power of P. Th these are these numbers here. Okay, and this guy here is actually one plus two to the power of P minus one divided by two to the power of P, two to the power of E max. Yeah? So it is the last number before we uh, go to infinity. And this step that we have there is a two to the power of E max. And then we go in steps of one divided by two to the power of P, so minus P. Yeah? So this is actually, the size of the step before the uh, last number. And let's play a little bit with this number. Okay, so um, 
these are now, um, yeah, let's print maybe also a small line and a title. These are um, experiments on max value. Okay. And yeah, we can try to construct this number. We can also, yeah, we can also guess the number. We, we know the formula for the number, but I could also just ask uh, Java for this number. It is a constant. Yeah? Um, okay, and let's, let's print this guy. Okay, so this is a fairly, fairly large number, yeah? 1.7 something times 10 to the 308. Okay, um, what happens now if I add something to this number? Let's check how is rounding working there. So let's add maybe well, something large, 1000 to this number. Okay, so I have max value plus 1000. So it's rounded back, yeah? It's rounded back to this same number, okay. Um, yeah, when do we expect that we are not rounded back? Let's define this um, step size. Yeah? So um, say I have a big step and our step size is, so the scale is two to the power of 1023, right, 1023. But then we go in steps of one divided by two to the power of P with P 52. So minus 52. Yeah? So that is one step. Let's go a little bit less than half of such a step. Okay. So what is now the big step? And what is now max value plus the big step? Okay. So we are still rounding back yeah and this uh, big step is uh, yeah quite a large number so my big step is okay 10 to the 292 yeah so something like 10 to the 292 so it's a big big number uh yeah so all these big numbers are rounded back to this max value so let's have a slightly bigger step okay let's call it bigger step i go say 0 0.5 times my step size so this is now my bigger step maybe make it a bit nice here so what is now max value plus this bigger step Okay, so now we are rounded to infinity. So you see that we have this rounding to infinity. So if I add to this number now, actually this guy is epsilon times the double max value. So if I add to this number, this uh, epsilon times the double max value, then I'm rounded to infinity. And all the numbers that are larger are rounded to the plus infinity. Let's have maybe some experiments with the special values, infinity and not a number. So let's print some horizontal line here. Yeah, the first thing is that, well, infinity is the result of some operations. For example, if you divide by zero, then we get infinity. Okay, so let's print that. Okay, we, we get infinity. Um, I mentioned that there are actually two different zeros, right? So if you go back to our slide, you see that there is the interesting thing that we have two representations of zero, okay? So zero is here, C equals zero. Uh, so there is a minus zero and a plus zero. Okay, so how can that happen? Well, let's um, do the 
experiment similar to what we did for the um, epsilon. Yeah, so we we start with a number. Say I start with a number one, and I make this number smaller and smaller. But now I make that smaller and smaller until I round to to zero. Uh, sorry, that's the same experiment as here. My tiny, but I I do not stop step uh, stop uh, that that step before. Okay, so um, yeah, let's let's uh, start with a number one and. Um, make that number smaller and smaller. So divide by two, as long as this guy is larger than zero. So what do we get here? So I would expect I get uh, zero. So this is now my plus zero here. Okay, so you get zero. But now let's do the same experiment with the loop starting at minus one. Yeah? So I check am I below zero. So this guy is now my minus zero. Am I below zero? And as long as I'm below zero, I make that number smaller and smaller. Okay, so let's print now this guy, so this guy is minus zero. And you see that actually really I get two different results from these two, making the number smaller and smaller. So he has rounded to plus zero from that side, and he has rounded to minus zero from that side. So now I have two different zeros created in my computer. So are actually these guys equal? Yeah. So I can test this. Yeah. So let's test now. Um, actually, is plus zero equal to minus zero? So this is now a Boolean test. Yeah. So is plus zero equal to minus? Oops. Minus zero. Oh, there's a type typo here. So let's do a rename. So, um, yeah, is it equal to minus zero? And this is true. Yeah? So he has two different representation, which you can print out and you can maybe check for this, but uh, he considers it in the Boolean uh, expression as being equal. So what happens now if I do one divided by zero with the minus zero? So let's just repeat this here, one divided by zero, but now I repeat it with the minus zero. So this is one divided by minus zero. So you see I'm rounding to minus infinity. Yeah? Also, this is a reasonable operation. So there are now um, very nice, um, reasonable inter uh, uh, implementations for these uh, special values. And you can maybe go on here a little bit. For example, a question is also, what is infinity plus infinity? So infinity plus infinity. So what's that? Okay, do I, do I have infinity already calculated here? Yeah, I have my one over zero, that is an infinity. Yeah, so maybe I use my, my minus zero and my plus zero to define this. Yeah, but this is plus infinity. You can also take a constant here. Yeah, So there is a constant, positive infinity and negative infinity. But now as we are so nicely calculating here, so maybe I use the one divided by zero to define this. So this is my plus infinity and I define my minus infinity. Okay, yeah, so if you like, you can also print these guys. Maybe I print these guys plus infinity and minus infinity so that we are sure that we have 
the correct values here. And now I like to have the calculation plus infinity plus plus infinity. So what do we get now? No. So I have that one divided by minus zero is minus infinity. So my plus infinity is the plus infinity, minus infinity is the minus infinity. So that's correctly defined. Infinity plus infinity is of course infinity. Uh, also infinity plus say some number uh, is also just infinity. You also don't get back out of infinity. Uh, if you subtract something, even if we subtract, for example, our max value, you know, the very large guy, where you would maybe expect now that we get out of it, if it is interpreted as numbers, we do not get get away from it. Yeah, it's like a like a magnet. What is now plus infinity minus infinity? Yeah, so plus minus infinity. Yeah, actually, that would be if the two numbers they are equal. Yeah, that would be a zero. Huh? So let's have a plus minus infinity here. Okay, that should be a zero, and we get not a number. So now we get an error. So sometimes, yeah, he is rounding back to infinity because that result is really interpretable. Huh? So we know the value is too large and it is too large positive, for example. But now. Here it is actually undefined because infinity could be the result of some rounding of anything. And I have two any things that I'm here subtracting, so I do not know what it is. Okay, so that was a small uh, tour. Yeah, so speaking of not a number, well, not a number also occurs um, if you uh, take, for example, the square root of minus one. Yeah, so it is our uh, representation of some error. So let's have a square root here of minus one. So I also get not a number. And as I explained, any operation that involves not a number, again, leads um, not, uh, leads not, a, uh, not a number. So that was maybe a nice tour through these special values and through yeah, our epsilon the max value and the tiny value. And let's now continue here in our little code session list. Yeah, so we now checked a bit on the max value plus and minus zero plus and minus infinity. Yeah, and uh, as mentioned, you can check all this code out yeah, and try it a little bit at home. Yeah, it is in this Git repository here actually, and the stuff of this section is in this package, and we are now working here in this um, in this class. So let us now continue with a loss of significance. So I would like to discuss uh, what is actually the effect that one plus epsilon is equal to one. So the rounding leads to this effect that one plus epsilon is rounded to one, and this may result in, well, unexpected results in certain uh, calculations. And I have a nice example here, which is very simple. It is calculate the solution of a quadratic equation. So maybe you know all this from school here. Yeah, x squared plus px plus q equals zero. I would like to calculate the solution Maybe you already remember here the formula. Uh, so there is a formula for if you like to calculate the smallest solution, the smallest root. So the smallest solution of that equation. So the smallest root means that I consider here the case where there is a minus here. Uh, so you have two roots plus minus. So there's a minus here. So the smallest solution is minus p half minus square root of p squared divided by four minus q. And yeah, maybe what's not so uh, well known is that you can represent this uh, in an alternative way. And this alternative way is just that you take now this solution here. So minus p 
pi half minus square root of p squared divided by four minus q. Um, and you just multiply it with minus p half plus square root of p squared divided by four minus q. So you just multiply with the other root. Yeah? And of course, you also divide by this. Okay, and then what you get is, okay, this is uh, plus p squared divided by four minus p squared divided by four. So this is canceling. So I just get a plus q on top. So I have uh, an alternative way of representing this solution. It is the same root, yeah? It's not the second root. This uh, other formula here is just an alternative representation of the same root. And let's implement this and maybe also try here uh, two yeah, nice values, yeah? 10 million for the P and a one for the Q. Maybe I do that here just in our code, yeah? So this is now, experiment on the loss um, of significance. Okay, so let's take for the P uh, minus 10 million. And let's take for the Q as an example one. Yeah, so we will later play a little bit with these values and try um, other values. Okay, let's calculate the solution. Yeah, so this is my X1, get smallest root of quadratic equation. Well, for these parameters, P uh, and Q. So uh, I have to implement this method. Yeah, here it tells me, okay, this does not exist. Okay, let's implement it here. And I just implement my formula. So my formula is minus P half, and then it's the smallest root. So it's minus the square root of P times P divided by four minus Q. Okay, so that's easy. So now let's check the solution. Okay, so I print my P. So my P is equal to P, I print my Q, I print my solution, my solution, okay. And let's run the program. Okay, so this is minus 10 million, this is a one, and this is some nine point something 10 to the minus eight, okay. Let's check the solution, so I, Print now, okay, so maybe I say this here is my solution x1. So I check now x1 squared plus p x1 plus q. So this is now my test. So x1 squared plus p times x1 plus q. I check my solution. And I get that this is not zero. Okay, did I do something wrong? Uh, I don't. I don't spot an error. We we'll spot an error. Hmm. Let's try um, the other solution. Uh, so I call this x two, but it is the same same solution. So let's try the other representation of the solution. So let's call this here, get smallest root of quadratic equation one. And let's try the same with the implementation of the other formula. No? So I would like to have a formula with x2. So x2 squared P x two plus Q is then my test. Yeah? So now I do everything with X two. So I need to implement this formula. Okay, so let's implement this formula. So the formula was Q divided by the other root. Yeah, so it's actually this guy here, but now the other root, so with a plus, Okay, and then Q divided by this other root. Okay, so that's now 
the second way of calculating this root. Okay, so you see the P is the same, yeah, the Q is the same. The solution is very similar, yeah? So this here is 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus eight. This is almost 10 to the minus seven, but he gets a 10 to the minus seven, and this is the solution. Okay, so maybe I get rid of this here. You have two different ways of calculating this root, and one way does not work, the other does work. Well, and why is that? Okay, so I used here the minus 10 million. Yeah, You can also use the plus 10 million. Uh, so in the beginning, I was uh, not decided which one I should use. And actually here on the slide, it is the uh, plus 10 million suggested. So let's try the plus 10 million. And then uh, you see that this guy here does not work. Yeah, this guy here has um, a much larger error. Okay, so let's go back to this example. Uh, why is this guy working and this guy is not working? Okay, so what you see here is that this number here, this number here is very large. So it's 10 million squared yeah, divided by four. And what you do is you subtract a very small number from this. So this is like a one and an epsilon. Yeah? So this guy plays the one and this guy plays the epsilon. So you have there a rounding error. But then once the root is calculated, so this root here is approximately P divided by two. Yeah? So it is a little bit different from P divided by two. So then he is rounding this back to P divided by two. And you see that actually he has a large error because now he's subtracting two large numbers where there was a small error in one number and he's subtracting two large numbers to get again a small number. Okay, so we have this problem of loss of significance because we have this one plus epsilon situation here inside. This problem is not a big problem in the other formula because what I'm doing here is I have here a 10 million plus something small and here I have, okay, this should be the minus 10 million. So sorry for the typo. And here I have the plus 10 million. So I have a 10 million minus 10 million. Yeah. While here I have a plus 10 million plus a 10 million. So these are two large numbers that are added. And it doesn't matter that in this number there was a small error. Okay, so I'm adding two large numbers and adding two large numbers. He doesn't care that in the other large number there was a small error. It will be still a small error. And then dividing this by a large number, yeah, that there was a small error in the large number is not a problem. Okay, so that was the loss um, of significance. Yeah, can you explain it? Yeah, we can explain it. And we did our uh, third or last part of this code session. Thanks for today.